Dear friends, again, I'm Steve Larson. We're coming to you from Calvary United Methodist Church in Frederick, Maryland. Happy Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. This is a day we celebrate. And although we are not together in this place that we treasure and that has enriched our lives in many ways, we are still together. And we can be in one spirit as we celebrate this holy day. Uh, I want to give just a few announcements before we get underway. Yesterday, there was a YouTube that was placed on, uh, or a video that was placed on YouTube by Dave Herber. He's got a wonderful uh, message for the children, and uh, you'll want to check that out if you haven't seen it so far. I also want to mention that if we run into some technical difficulties today, not to worry, we're trying to uh, make sure everything is recorded, and we'll have it placed uh, on YouTube and the church website if it's not available on Facebook. But we want to recognize that there are a lot of people using the service right now, and uh, we'll just try to make sure we do the best job that we can. Although we're not gathered here, we certainly have the opportunity to be gathered uh, in heart and in spirit. We have difficulties that we're facing now, and there will be grief and sorrow, particularly in the days ahead of us. But at the same time, Easter reminds us that the sorrow and loss is never the last word. God is with us, and there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God we find in Christ Jesus. So I also want to mention that all the music that we're doing today, with the exception of one hymn, is music that we had included in our Easter celebration a year ago. So you'll be hearing our choir, you'll be hearing the brass, you'll be hearing... Uh, the people of this congregation sing as they did a year ago on Easter. There are also, I also want to mention that we have bulletins that were sent out this week to Calvary folks. You should have gotten something in the mail, but also you can check your email box, your inbox. Yesterday we sent out uh, an email with the bulletin as well. If you don't have a bulletin, just join in. We're glad to have you with us. And this would be a wonderful opportunity to invite um, friends to join with you, you know, especially if they're not accustomed to going to church or they're at home and they're looking for a word of encouragement or hope. You could be the one to pass on this message to them and it can be a valuable way that they can feel some hope and encouragement in this time that we face. So let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship the Lord. Thank you. 
and at our call to worship. Buildings are closed, dark as tombs, and yet the church, God's people, have still gathered. We are shut up in our homes, some of us fearful and anxious, and all of us unsettled, mourning what was. And yet God, God still shows up, breathing peace unto us. This Easter morning we have no lilies, no hymnals, no pews, and yet neither did those first disciples, and the good news was shared anyway. People of God, our God is a God of and yet, reminding us even in our struggles, God offers us new life. God promises us resurrection. Let us lift our voices together in praise. Well, you're sounding pretty good, church. All right, our first scripture lesson is from the book of Psalms. It's Psalms 118, selected verses. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love is forever. Let Israel say his steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live, and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. As Pastor Steve said, we have a fun video posted on YouTube um, for our kids, but I have something to share with you as well. 
I'm sure most of you know a couple nursery rhymes. Maybe you know the one that goes like this, where you use your hands and they're spiders. And it goes, the itsy bitsy spider climbed up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. You know that one, right? It ends just like that. Wait, there's more to this story? Out came the sun and dried up all the rain and the itsy bitsy spider climbed up the spout again. So our story today from the Gospel of Mark um, is one that we of course know, we know the story of the resurrection, but Mark tells it a bit differently. And he tells it like Jesus' friends kind of thought about it. They didn't know what we know. They were stuck at the part of the nursery rhyme, down came the rain and washed the spider out. So imagine their surprise when up came the sun and the spider was going up the spout again. Many of the images that we celebrate on Easter are the same. Um, caterpillars, when they go in their cocoons, they look like they're dead, and then they come out as butterflies. Eggs don't look like there's much life to them, and baby chicks come out of them. And so when we look at all these reminders around us, it helps us to know that the story isn't over yet. Um, that we are anticipating the resurrection, that indeed Christ is alive and resurrected. Now, if you were all here with me, in order to celebrate, I'd give you all pet spiders. I'm just kidding. Uh, we get some eggs. So hopefully, when we are all together again, we will have another Easter and celebrate. But hear now these words from the Gospel of Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And when they looked up and saw the stone, which was very large, it had been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is a place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb. For terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Let us pray. Patient teacher, we come to you this morning with hearts heavy, uncertain of what kind of Easter this might be. So through the words of my mouth and the whispers of our own hearts, help us to understand the power of new life once more. Amen. In Mark's account of the resurrection, three women journeyed to the tomb early one morning. Mark names these three women as Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome. And they had endured much pain, much horror, really. And then they had been stuck inside. The reason given to us is a religious one. They stayed inside during the Sabbath. These women who had followed Jesus were deeply faithful. But I wonder if they stayed at home because they were afraid. Afraid of running into people who had called for Jesus' crucifixion. Afraid that the nightmare they had experienced on Good Friday was really true. That Jesus was really gone. Afraid that life could never return to the goodness without him. They are so afraid, in fact, that when they are on their way to the tomb, finally leaving their homes, anxiety consumes them with the question, who will roll away the stone for us? 
So their need to be near Jesus' body had outweighed their fear and anxiety, but here they were, not sharing stories of how Jesus loved them, but worrying about how they could possibly move on in this new future. A stone had ended their story, shutting away their teacher and Lord, and now, even though they were putting one foot in front of the other, they were still stuck in fear and uncertainty. So stuck, in fact, that even with the good news of the resurrection, these women struggle to let their faith push aside their fear. The Gospel of Mark ends this resurrection story with the words, And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is not the Gospel account of resurrection that really fits with our usual Easter here at Calvary. Where is the Jesus who calls us by name? Where are the tears of mourning that turn to joy? Where, for us in our worship planning, is a story that warrants an explosion of Easter lilies and swelling trumpet music? Where is the happy ending? But even though this is not the gospel account we want, perhaps it is the one that feels most true in these days of a pandemic that still has not hit its peak. I imagine most of us are feeling a bit uncertain and fearful these days. That's why, as muted and sad as Mark's account of the resurrection is, as out of sync as it is with our normal way of doing Easter, it is one we can understand on a day when the church is empty on the holiest of Christian holidays. Perhaps this account is one that feels more true. Feels more true when you've lost your job and are afraid of how long you'll be without work. Perhaps it is the one that feels more true when you have a diagnosis that has been put on hold. Or when you're worrying about yourself or a loved one getting sick. Yes, the Easter story in the Gospel of Mark says that Jesus is not in the tomb. The stone has been rolled away. The man in a white robe, an angel, we usually say, he tells us we are to go and tell the others. We are to go and see Jesus alive in Galilee. But in this story, we haven't seen the, the risen Jesus. Not yet. We might be amazed that the stone has been rolled away, the body is gone, and an angel gives an unbelievable message. But the women were still afraid, and we are still afraid. How can we go tell of the resurrection when we aren't supposed to go anywhere? No wonder the women said nothing to anyone, or so Mark's story goes. It all seems impossible. Resurrection, new life in these days of fear and uncertainty, does indeed seem impossible. And yet, even now, it is happening. How many of you are in touch with friends and family you haven't been in touch with in a long time? Those reconnections, revived relationships, they can help point us to resurrection. It may be difficult not to see the people we long to see in person, but there are new ways of doing things that can breathe new life into our lives, even now. When school was closed that first week, I asked the youth to share with me uh, where they saw God. And the stories that I heard were ones of revival in their relationships. Spending time outside in the beauty of God's creation, going for walks with dogs or cuddling cats, getting the whole family to play Just Dance, celebrating birthdays and anniversaries by Zoom. They said that even though things are scary, they loved the time they could spend with the people most important to them. These are all kids used to eating dinner on the run, on the way to all the activities. But here they are experiencing new life, focusing on what's most important. Perhaps the most powerful story that I've heard of this resurrection was one Pastor Steve shared with me. 
Many at Calvary have helped volunteer or given blood at Eric Anderson's blood drives here. Because so many blood drives have been canceled, Pastor Steve worked with Eric to plan a blood drive on Holy Thursday this past week. It was limited in scope, not like the big extravaganzas we're used to, because we needed to keep possible contact between donors down and give workers enough space to be safe. But even with these limitations, I think we had 27 units of blood donated. That is a victory, showing people's generosity. But the story that really got me was that Pastor Steve said one woman he talked to was a first-time donor. She was terrified of needles, but compelled to do something to love her neighbor. Her family told her maybe she shouldn't. Her fears tried to hold her back. But she overcame her fear to give life. She chose a new way of living, a resurrection way, focused on selfless love even in difficult times. Think of how we were before this pandemic, fighting about everything, really. And this pandemic hasn't solved any of those problems. We're still fighting, but, but there are glimpses of new life. Glimpses of a better way to live that are apparent as we love God, love ourselves, and love our neighbors. We can use this time to rewrite our stories. You see, resurrection is not just resuscitation. It's not just about going back to the way that things used to be. It's about new life, a new beginning. Mark's gospel doesn't resolve into a happy ending because it's a challenge to us. It forces us to ask whether or not the women at the tomb overcome their fear in order to proclaim the new beginning in Galilee. And it asks that question of us, too. Will we ourselves overcome our fear to reach out in love over and over again in this pandemic and to reject life as it was, to use this time of uncertainty to create something new. How will we write the end of this story? I don't remember where I read this, but some commentator on Mark imagined that when this gospel's version of the resurrection was read in community, after the story concluded with the rather depressing verse 8, a child would be called forward. Is that how the story ends, the child would be asked? And the child would laugh and say, no. How could we all be here if no one said anything to anyone for they were afraid? Of course they told the story. And then once the child had proven the story continued, others would begin to tell their own stories of resurrection. What about you? How would you answer that child's question? How would you tell the rest of the story? Where have you encountered resurrection? Mark is inviting each of us into the story, saying to each of us through the young man dressed in a white robe, but go tell. Yes, we might be afraid, like those first women at the tomb. But we are to go tell the good news anyway. Tell of the good news that Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified, has been raised. Hallelujah. Amen. Before we go to God in prayer, I just want to lift up some of the particular folks that we want to be praying for. Uh, we want to be praying for the family of Doris Felton. Doris passed away yesterday. We want to be praying for Betty Waltz, who lost a brother this week. We want to be praying for Nancy Slavikowski and her recovery from surgery. For Dottie Mitchell, who is recovering at home. We want to be praying for Nancy Dobbs, who's going through uh, cancer treatment. We want to be praying for these and others that we hold in our hearts. I invite you to pray with me. We thank you, O God, for faithful women long ago who stepped out on Easter morning and then went on to proclaim the good news. 
even when others dismissed what they had to say. When we feel uncertain and fearful, teach us to keep faith with such women, that our witness may become bold, our love deep, and our faith true. It's remarkable news, even if we've heard this story many times before. But now, especially in this year when our lives have been so disrupted and placed in danger, it's up to each of us to decide just what to make of this news. To believe, to trust, to hold that which is true, or to dismiss it altogether and treat it as irrelevant. It's up to us. Lord, on this day we celebrate your resurrection. May we hear the news with eager hearts and open minds. Help us to be ready to catch the excitement of the empty tomb and to feel the quickening pulse as those who went to see the grave and to take in what had happened. May we experience more than just excitement. May we experience a profound awareness of the reality of your love and power at work in our world and in our lives. May the energy of the resurrection empower us to become new. May we find the sure and certain hope which you have to share with us today and every day. Eternal God, hear us as we pray. Your power is great, and so are our needs as we bring these to you. God, we ask that all who are affected by this virus be held in your loving care. In this time of uncertainty, help us to know what, is our, what it is for us to do. We know that you did not cause this suffering, but that you are with us in it and through it. Help us to recognize your presence in the acts of kindness, in moments of silence, in the beauty of the created world around us, and the opportunity to reach out to those we love. Grant peace and protection to all, especially those who are in need. We pray for those who provide medical care, who are often stretched thin with the number of people that they are caring for, and they put themselves at risk as they offer care. We pray for loved ones and friends that we cannot visit or embrace. We pray for those who are lonely and afraid. We pray for those who are providing services to keep us fed and supplied in this time. We pray for those who have filed for unemployment, those who have lost their livelihoods, those who lack medical coverage and the necessities of, that they need in this crisis. Our needs are great, O Lord, but time and time again, your power has overcome our weaknesses. Your love has overcome our divisions. Your light pierces our darkness, and your grace rolls away every stone. For the good news of Easter, we give you thanks, and we join in the prayer that Jesus taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. During this time of virtual worship, we've kind of learned a new way of doing the offering. Oftentimes we think of it as a time to uh, pass the plates and to drop in our tithes and offerings. And uh, it's become a time when we maybe recenter ourselves and we find ways to give our thoughts, our energies, our, our hopes to God and allow God to speak to us as well. I would encourage you, if you have offerings to give, uh, monetary offerings, to send them in or visit our website and give online. Those are appreciated and allows us to continue to do the ministry that is so important. But in this time of offering, may we center ourselves and focus our energies on the Lord who loves us.
let us pray. God of great gifts, this morning we give you praise. We give you glory, we give you thanks. With resurrection humming in our hearts, our minds are tuned to your song of peace. We joyfully present our gifts to you, a tangible chorus of thanksgiving, a harmony of hope for your kingdom come. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Amen. Thank you.